This year, for the first time, all three flagship action cameras can record GPS data internally. The GoPro Hero 13 Black has an embedded GPS antenna. The DJI Action 5 Pro does not, but it can record GPS data when paired with the GPS remote controller. The same happens with the Insta360 Ace Pro 2, but here we can choose between the basic Action Remote and the more advanced Preview Remote with Live Video. Which camera to choose depends on many factors and we will not consider all of them, but only the ones related to GPS and telemetry data. More specifically, the GPS quality, position, altitude and speed in good conditions, the precision and frequency of the data, the quality of the GPS in difficult conditions, more sensors in addition to the GPS, like orientation or a barometer, syncing external data sources to the video, like a cycling activity, motorsports, electronics, aviation instruments, and so on, and some considerations and convenience, like the time to get a GPS signal or whether you want a remote or not. By good conditions, we mean the GPS antenna has a clear view of the sky, so we will mount the cameras outside and upright. The GPS remotes will also have a clear view of the sky. For this test, we will drive on wide roads, far from buildings. At a first glance, all the cameras and remotes recorded a good GPS path. You can identify the GoPro by the blue color, DJI is yellow, the Insta360 with the preview remote is red, and the Insta360 with the action remote is pink. If we zoom in though, we start to see the differences. All the GPS tracks are usually within the road, but every now and then one deviates a little. Here we see a small offset in the DJI track. And later on, the Insta360 with the preview remote is also drifting significantly. Of course, this is only visible when zooming in. The general signal is quite usable for all of the cameras. But clearly, the GoPro stays closer to the real location by a tiny margin. The Insta360 action remote is also quite good on this front. Another important aspect is altitude or elevation. As a benchmark or a reference of truth, we have computed the Google Maps altitude throughout the path. That's the white line. Altitude is the less accurate component of GPS data, so some inaccuracies are to be expected. However, all four options record mostly usable data, with the GoPro again being the closest to the truth. The Insta360 Action Remote is a close second, while both the DJI and the Insta360 Preview Remote display errors of about a couple dozen meters at different points in the track. GPS antennas generally do a better job at recording speed, and indeed, looking at the speed data, all four recording options show almost the exact same values. The vertical offset has been introduced later to enhance the comparison. Later on, we will analyze these values in more detail. To sum up, in this first overview with good GPS conditions, the GoPro comes on top as the most reliable, with the Insta360 Action Remote as a close second, but hold on, things may change in the rest of the analysis. Let's zoom in even more on the data to analyze some interesting details. If we look at the raw locations of the Insta360 Action Remote, we can notice how it doesn't update smoothly. When looking at the coordinates, the reason for this becomes apparent. The Action Remote is only updating once every second. In many cases, that's not a big deal. Programs like Telemetry Overlay can interpolate the data and display a smooth path, but in other situations, it may be a downside. See, for example, how the speed changes compared to the GoPro data. If we were to compute acceleration data from these values, the GoPro would have a clear advantage, resulting in better precision. The Insta360 Preview Remote, on the other hand, does update more often, 10 times per second, but we still can notice some choppiness in the GPS locations. Why is that? Well, because of precision. If you look closely at the latitude and longitude values, GoPro and DJI record the data with five decimals. Whereas the Insta360 Preview Remote uses just three, and the Action Remote uses 4. This introduces tiny inaccuracies, it results in a lower effective update rate in many situations, and can cause problems when computing new values from the GPS data. Interestingly, the old Insta360 Remote could record 10 times per second with 4 decimals, which is better than the current options, but it's not compatible with new models like the Ace Pro 2. The lack of decimals in the preview remote also affects altitude data. See how the GoPro elevation moves smoothly thanks to decimals, while the Insta360 preview remote is choppy as it only records full meters. So on the precision and frequency front, GoPro and DJI show good results, Insta360 falls behind. 
let's switch to more difficult GPS conditions, which is a common issue when recording videos with data. Since the GoPro has the GPS antenna inside the camera and it needs to point at the sky, the assumption here is it will be at a disadvantage if we record upside down inside a vehicle. DJI and Insta360 shouldn't be affected by this, as we can still place the remotes wherever we have a good view of the sky, and therefore a good GPS signal. To make the test tougher, let's drive through narrow streets. And indeed, the GPS coordinates do suffer a little. But honestly, even the GoPro is doing better than expected, all things considered. Maybe a glass roof still lets in too much of the GPS data, so let's switch to a solid roof and see what happens. And finally, this does damage the GoPro signal significantly, to the point where it's worse than the rest. Still usable when zoomed out, but inaccurate when zoomed in. The remotes also suffer a little bit in narrow streets, but clearly the DJI One is holding up better than the rest. It's really close to the real position. So in the difficult GPS data test, DJI comes on top and the GoPro holds up better than expected. In any case, having a remote that you can place anywhere is useful under difficult conditions for the GPS signal. GPS is the telemetry data most users need, but it's not the only thing these cameras record. They have other sensors, for example, all of them record some exposure settings, accelerometer data, although with the Insta360 we cannot access accurate acceleration data that easily. Then both the GoPro and the DJI have good orientation data for pitch and roll values. That's not the case with the Insta, or at least we cannot access it. And finally, the DJI Action 5 Pro specifically has a barometer sensor that records very useful altitude changes, even if not paired to the GPS remote. This can be very useful in activities with vertical movement, like aviation, cycling, skydiving, and so on. And the same barometric sensor provides accurate depth data for activities like scuba diving. That is, of course, as long as you don't use a protective case. The camera is rated for 20 meters, but we pushed it a little bit to 26, and it was fine. However, be aware that the barometric sensor has failed in some of our tests. It may show a delay of a couple seconds, but more importantly, it sometimes thinks we are stuck at sea level, zero meters, both when underwater or in normal videos outside the water. The DJI team is aware of this problem, so let's hope it can be fixed with a firmware update down the road. So for the variety of its data streams, specifically the barometer, DJI wins this round, closely followed by GoPro, as they both include pitch and roll data. Of course, many serious users of telemetry data do not settle for whatever the camera records. A common situation is wanting to display performance values from a cycling computer and its sensors. Insta360 advertises synchronization with Garmin activities as one of the features of its software, and so does DJI. But since we are telemetry overlay, we can offer the same and more to GoPro users. Not only from Garmin activity trackers or almost any other brand of cycling computer, but also from smartphone apps, smartwatches, and an endless range of electronics, instruments, and file formats. Going back to cycling as an example, we could not only show speed, elevation, distance, and a range of GPS maps, but also cadence, heart rate, power zones, gears, slope, calories, temperature, laps, pedal balance, elevation gain, power to body weight ratio, pace, and many more. And that's only for cycling. There are specific metrics for dozens of activities like motorsports, aviation, sailing, skiing, drones, you name it. If for any reason the camera records bad GPS data, this is also a great way to replace it with better values. But of course, to do that you need to synchronize the data with the video. GPS timestamps make that very easy, and here there's something we should point out. The GoPro 13 records very accurate GPS timestamps, so that makes synchronization of external data very easy when the GPS is enabled. But with the other brands, this is slightly different. As you can see, the DJI is recording the GPS timestamps with the wrong time zone. This can be fixed in telemetry overlay, of course, but it's not ideal. The DJI team are again aware of this issue, so we are hoping for a fix via firmware. The Insta360 doesn't have this problem, but the data may sometimes be one or two seconds out of sync. Again, this is fixable within telemetry overlay. So for syncing external data, the GoPro would be our best option, and the DJI would come last while we wait for the timestamps to be fixed. And finally, convenience. Before you record a video with data, it's important that you already have a GPS lock. Otherwise, some of the video, or even all of it, could lack the GPS data. So, having a camera that finds the GPS signal fast is convenient. 
In our tests, the GoPro consistently found the GPS signal. After about 35 seconds, the DJI remote fluctuated a lot between 32 and 155 seconds. The Insta360 preview remote was also consistent around 49 seconds. And the Insta360 action remote could take anywhere between 80 and 110 seconds. But it was also the slowest to regain a connection after a quick reboot. Now, this is more subjective, but having to use a remote may or may not be convenient. We saw how that may benefit the GPS signal in some conditions, but not strictly needing a remote to record GPS data seems convenient as well. Of course, the GoPro also has a separate remote accessory unrelated to the GPS data. If we were to pick the fancier remote, that would be the Insta360 preview, as it shows you the live video feed and a couple of metrics. However, in our tests, it has also shown some connectivity issues. Here is an overview of our results. How much each of these matters is subjective to a great extent. Obviously, before making a final choice, consider other aspects of the camera, like image quality, accessories, battery life, and more, that many reviewers have analyzed in depth. At the end of the day, you can always sync good external data to any of the cameras. And finally, remember that to make the most out of the data, the official software from each camera is not enough. This very video was created with telemetry overlay and telemetry extractor. Both programs read the data from a range of cameras and data formats and do different things with it. Telemetry overlay creates visual metrics on top of the video with the camera data and external sources. And telemetry extractor converts the GPS and sensor data to multiple file formats so you can use them in an endless range of third-party software options. I hope this was useful. Feel free to ask any questions. See you in the next one.